Hi, my name is Barry Doyle. I am a nursing home abuse and neglect lawyer in Skokie, Illinois. I'm also the author of Built to Fail, which is a free report which describes how the nursing home business model ultimately produces unnecessary injuries and deaths for nurse, nursing home residents. It's something that's available for free uh, on my website, www.accidentlawillinois.com. I'm here today to talk about a citation that the Illinois Department of Public Health issued to McLean County Nursing Home in Normal after a resident there suffered a broken hip in a fall. Now, falls are a serious in issue in the long-term uh, care industry. Uh, it's something that's uh, specifically addressed in the federal regulations, and it's part of the care planning process. And the care planning process uh, starts with an assessment. It goes on, and there's a from the assessment, there's a care plan that's put into place that sets forth uh, what various members of the staff are supposed to do to address risks to, to the health and well-being of the resident, and then. Uh, from there, that care plan has to be communicated to members of the staff. Uh, that care plan has to be carried out on a day-to-day -day basis. And then finally, it needs to be evaluated on, on an ongoing basis for effectiveness and change if it proves to be ineffective in practice or if the care needs of the resident changes. So uh, this resident uh, was somebody who is becoming a progressively worse fall risk. Uh, the fall risk assessments that, that were done quarterly for her uh, changed her fall risk score from moderate to high risk, which was an indication that she is becoming progressively a greater, at greater risk of falling. And it's uh, something that should have triggered revisions of the care plan, uh, but it, it sounds like it didn't. Um, uh, this resident had a history which included two prior falls uh, before the one that, that she ended up suffering a broken hip in. Um, we know in the long-term care industry, having a fall tends to beget additional falls. Uh, and you know this is something that, that you want to avoid by revising the care plan to put in more steps to prevent falls for, from occurring. Um, this was a resident who had some mobility issues. Um, they need, uh, needed, she needed, uh, she was assessed on her minimum data set, which is a, um, uh, a sworn submission to the federal government about the uh, care needs that a resident has. Uh, she was uh, coded on the MDS, uh, the minimum data set, as being unsteady when moving from a seated to a standing position, which is obviously something that uh, poses a, a high risk of falling. Uh, she also needed extensive assist with toileting, meaning you know getting up and up and down from the toilet. Um, she was also known to have dementia, and dementia is an important factor in assessing a resident's fall risk because when a resident suffers from dementia, they can't be counted on to follow instructions, they can't be counted on to make good decisions for their own safety, they can't be counted on to recognize and heed their own physical limitations. So, you know, they, that lack of insight, that lack of judgment about the, the real risk they have of falling combined with some type of musculoskeletal problem, really, you know, those are, are the you know two big ticket items when it comes to assessing fall risk. And then, of course, we also have this resident who had a history of falls itself, which, as we know, tends to beget additional falls. So with a resident who has this risk profile, um, I, there are a number of things that need to be taken into account, including what some of her known behaviors were. And one of her known behaviors was that uh, she would frequently get up to go to the bathroom on her own. Uh, members of the staff described to the state surveyor uh, finding her on, on the toilet with nobody having helped her there. Uh, they described instances where she would come down uh, out into the hallway with depends around her ankles uh, because she'd gotten to uh, the bathroom on her own, gone to the bathroom, uh, but just wasn't able to lift the depends back into place. So, you know, the staff was pretty well aware that that she was somebody who had had this behavior, this habit of getting up on her own, unassisted from her wheelchair, making her way to the bathroom, uh, getting on and off the to toilet on her own. These are all really risky behaviors for somebody who has this particular profile. So when somebody has this kind of profile, you, you want to have your care plan include specific, specific steps which are intended to address the fall risks, the, the risks for falling that the resident actually poses. Um, and for somebody like her, this would include things like uh, frequent rounding, 
uh, having her uh, left in, in the common areas, like by the nurse's station, the dining room, the day room, uh, the activity room, what have you. Um, the other thing that might be considered is a toileting schedule where um, a resident is observed for a period of uh, three days or seven days, depending on, on how the nursing home does it, where they're checked in on every 15 minutes or half hour to figure out what are the times when this resident normally needs help going to the bathroom. You know, if they customarily go to the bathroom uh, after breakfast, a staff member can be uh, assigned to bring, bring the resident to the bathroom uh, right after breakfast so, so that uh, it doesn't become an urgent matter and so that the resident isn't left trying to do this on, on their own. Um, these are all reasonable steps that are, you know, would be a part of a s smart fall prevention care plan. Um, instead, what we had for this resident's care plan, the main intervention was to remind the resident to use the call light. And knowing that this resident had dementia, um, reminding them to use the call light was a, a relatively empty gesture because you know, we know that you know, residents who have dementia aren't likely to remember to follow those kinds of instructions. You know, the, the kinds of interventions that needed to be put into place would have been more proactive on the staff, including rounding, leaving the resident in a common area, perhaps trying this toileting schedule. There are a number of other steps, but uh, perhaps the most futile one, uh, telling her to use the call light, was the one that was actually suggested. Now, I, on the day that this resident had her fall, um, one of the aides described having brought her to the bathroom around uh, five o'clock in the evening. Um, she was last seen at 6.45 uh, in the evening, uh, seated in her wheelchair near the foot of the bed, reading a newspaper. And a little over an hour later, uh, staff heard somebody calling for help and they came to the bathroom and, and found her, uh, 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 came to her room and found her on the floor. Um, yeah, there, there were obvious signs of injury. She was brought to the hospital where she ultimately underwent surgery for a broken hip. Now, th this is a fall that uh, had other steps been taken, you know, very well could have been prevented by frequent rounding, by having the resident in a common area, uh, by putting a, a resident, the resident on, on a toileting schedule so that she got the help proactively to get to the bathroom that, that she might have needed otherwise. So. Uh, this is, a, in all likelihood, a, a fall that never, ever should have occurred. So my name is Barry Doyle. I, I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you need help with any issue, please feel free to call our office. The number there is 312-263-1080, or you can visit us on the web at www.accidentlawillinois.com. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you.